Ooh. Calgary Flames. Oh, doctor. It, it looked like Canada's teams were going to go 3-0 last night, but then the Flames blew a 4-1 lead and now are on the brink of elimination. Did you get the feeling like the Flames just blew their entire season in one game? There was that one shot, and, and Dobbs, if you want to run the overtime winner, go ahead. There was the one shot when they went to the crowd on, on CBC first after the goal went in off Michael Stone. Hmm. I thought the guy in the crowd kind of said it all. Like there was a you level. A pitcher tells a th thousand words. Absolutely. Like there was Something a level like of disbelief. Listen, I think the, Cal the Calgary Flames were done going into that overtime intermission. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me that room had any belief in it yeah, after it blowing. One. So the goal goes in, and and there was just the one dude who who represented we have made thousands it differently. Uh, of Flames fans. But you know what I'm saying. I don't even know if we have to show yeah. it. It doesn't matter. He was just in disbelief. He was in utter and complete disbelief, and it spoke volumes that the season ended last night. Mm -hmm. And I got a lot of respect for Glenn Gullitson and, and Brad for Living and Brian Burke, but if you can't protect a 4-1 lead at home during the playoffs, maybe it's time to go. And I think the Flames have one more shot here in them, and, and then you can look at what should be an interesting offseason. When you look at free agents, you know, it's, it's going to be in a, like Brad for Living. But yeah. I, th I, think, uh, I think I think Calgary's season ended last night, and you'd be hard pressed. Even even the most hardened, loyal Flames supporter, yes. decade long season ticket holders, mm -hmm. I would I would challenge the honesty if they told me they still think they got a shot in the series, considering they haven't won at Honda Center since the Bush administration. I I, have, I think it's done. I think it's over. Not a big limb I'm climbing on here, yeah. but I think it's over. Uh, for just back me up on this for the entire season going back to last season when Kerry Ramo was between the pipes or whoever they were rolling Shut out. Curry right? Rowe. The, Shut the, Curry the, Rowe. The, it's been goaltending, right? Chad Johnson's hot for a flash, they win games. Uh, Brian Elliott gets hot for more than a flash, they win a lot of games. Yeah. And in the playoffs, Brian Elliott's been average. He has been average. I think that this season for them is do they have good enough goaltending? And they're going to have to decide that in the offseason. And, and now it helped them get there? Oh, right? yeah. And, and, and Chad Johnson, too, right? Yes. They don't get in without Chad Johnson's yes. month where he no, was the number one guy. No, but you need consistent goaltending in this league to be any good. Yep. And they haven't gotten it. Although the Ducks have kind of. Well, they, they got two. They, <laughs> yeah. Listen, and to be fair about it, too, two fortunate bounces on, on game winners, right? Yeah. Lance Bauman and then last yeah. night. Yeah. But, look, it's 3 nothing. I don't care how the goals go in. They went in game four. Going to be interesting. David writes in and said, Tim wants to talk about Toronto versus Pittsburgh when it's only 2-1 in the series. Okay, buddy, relax. Like, I think I was kind of sort of tongue-in-cheek, was it not? Like, Can you guys not figure out tongue-in-cheek? Oh, my goodness. There's a little bit of sarcasm like, in like the this. idea. It's like, this is tongue-in-cheek. Like, this is a, all right, what about from away? <laughs> That's what I'll do from now on for everyone we're to get it. Away. We are not the joke on the show. We gotta, Make it relax. we got to steal Levitards. Oh. You're that guy. Right? Don't be that guy. Hey, Canada, don't be that guy. <laughs>